just say two things. One is that um, I think what's inherent in your paper and what's, I think, part of Mike, Mike's argument um, and Nas's argument of, you know, pay now or pay later is there's a kind of, it's a, it's a kind of a, um, a, a recognition that there is benefit to moving sooner. Um, but the second thing I'd say is we ought not shy away from the inherent, inherent goodness of what American leadership means, even if it doesn't have all the ancillary benefits that you've all identified. Those ancillary benefits are good and they're important and we've garnered many of them since World War II. Mm -hmm. But there's also uh, an inherent rightness in the position that we've generally taken. And I, I don't want us to be shy about that. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, that rightness has a lot of manifestations that are good. Um, but the position itself is a good one, uh, you know, capital G good. Mm -hmm. And we ought not uh, be shy about that. And um, I think, by the way, that's an argument that works with a lot of Americans. Um, and I think we should stick to it. So the, you know, the best response to dehumanization, which is one of the great challenges of our time, is humanization. And, uh, and the question becomes, how do you humanize refugees and people in need um, in a way that appeals to Americans, which I think you can mm. uh, in, in this context. When I have visited, I mean, you meet, first of all, you see a couple of things. You see predominantly women and children. Um, in, in many of these settings. Um, and um, you see educational challenges that are just, you, you know, insurmountable. You see families struggling to preserve their family honor and avoid early marriage for their daughters. You see, um, you know, sons going into child labor. You see, um, you, know, you know, human problems that add up to strategic problems. Um, and it's, uh, you know, that I think is, is one of the most valuable and important things that could be done is to reveal um, the, um, the nature of the people that we're talking about. And, you know, the dehumanization that goes on is this potential threats. I mean, this is, you know, he, the president refers to this as a Trojan horse threat to the American people. Um, and, uh, you know, the, op, the, the way to counter that is by talking about the way people as they are. Um, and, um, and so I think telling those stories becomes um, very important. I'll offer a couple of bright spots. Um, you know, just as Dennis talked about, you know, in every community where we resettle refugees, we see um, community leadership at every level um, that turns out in support and partnership of those refugees. Um, we've had a 100% increase in our volunteer applications um, since January 2017. Um, we've had, you know, our um, federal dollars are matched um, uh, on a one to two ratio by private dollars. Um, so people are giving their money and they're giving their time to show their support um, for refugees. And the networks that we have um, in each of those local communities of faith leaders, of community organizations, of schools, um, local employers, mayors, law enforcement, you know, at that level, when you're within that concentric circle around a resettlement office, there's a tremendous amount of support um, for refugees. Um, and I'll offer a few other data points. <laughs> um, we. Um, you know, one of the things that was really, uh, uh, you know, one of the things that we sought to do over this last year um, as we face sort of unprecedented attacks on refugees and refugee admissions and seeking to challenge that narrative um, was uh, try and mobilize our supporters as advocates. And um, one of the, a number of encouraging signs from there, um, one that we were able to mobilize supporters on a per capita basis at a higher rate in red states than even in blue states. People are really motivated to speak to their values, as Dennis said, and to stand up for refugees in an environment where they see um, those refugees under attack and when they know from their communities um, a different story. And in fact, when those interventions were localized, when it was made very local, 
um, to their context when it was about you know what their representative might have been saying that was anti-refugee, people were really quick to respond and raise their voices. 